And welcome everyone to an NABC offseason chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Gonzaga head coach Mark Few. And I should also say gold medal winning assistant coach Mark Few. Uh, Mark, let's start there. What an unbelievable experience that you had this summer. Uh, the semifinal and the final. So the gold medal game and then the semifinal game were two of the best basketball games I've seen in a long time. Certainly the gold medal game against France, the atmosphere. What was the overall experience like, and especially that weekend? Well, the overall experience was literally the greatest, you know, professional event experience I've ever had. And I've been so blessed with what's happened with my life here at Gonzaga, with, you know, two national championship games and all that. But and this was just a different level. I mean, it, it, it wasn't – Gonzaga fans and or Kansas fans or North Carolina fans. This is for our entire country. And uh, so the scope of it was amazing. Uh, the ability to be around, you know, the greatest coaches in the world uh, for two years, the ability to be around the greatest players in the world for 44 straight days. Um, and just the, Gosh, the camaraderie and the chemistry and the uh, this the single-minded focus of just trying to win a gold medal that we all had uh, just made it for just a uh, absolutely spectacular uh, experience and and certainly you know one I'll never forget. So you really had an all-star coaching staff and an all-star team, and I'm first curious on the coaching aspect um, because in your daily life, you know, there's a head coach, there's assistants. But you were with exceptional head coaches who have all competed at the highest level for championships uh, and have won. Um, what was that dynamic like? Absolutely. Probably the greatest part of this whole experience. It's not, not taken away from anything uh, with the players. They were, they were so good and so made so many sacrifices to make this happen. But, we were together for two years, the staffs. So we forged, you know, some, some great friendships over that time. And just, uh, I mean, I'm just telling you, these guys are not only the, the best of the best, you know, what they do, but literally they, they are some of the best people I've ever met in my whole, you know, walk of life. Um, they're, they're funny. Uh, they're, uh, very inquisitive, you know, the, uh, Gonzaga, what we're doing, uh, interested in that. They're team players. They are, uh, you know, they have families. They're, they're very giving, they're caring, they're very charitable. They're extremely witty, you know, which I enjoy. We, we had just had great banter going back and forth. Um, Steve's style as a head coach, I think, is much like mine, where, I mean, it's very collaborative. Um, and so he, he was very much in harnessing the entire talents and entire knowledge that we had in the room. And, and I'd be remiss to not mention, uh, you know, Grant Hill. Um, he, he was kind of our, he was, he wasn't kind of, he was basically our general manager and just what an amazing person, uh, uh, he is and just so smart and so wise and, and just a great listener and just a great person. So enjoyable, enjoyable to be around. Um, again, great sense of humor and, and just great humility. And then again, I think everybody who's ever been involved, you know, with USA basketball in any phase all the way down to like the 18 and unders, Sean Ford is literally an American hero. I mean, he, he really truly is. And you can ask Coach K this. You can ask, ask Pop that. You can ask any of the players this. He literally is an American hero. And someday I hope he'll be in the Hall of Fame for everything he's done for, uh, you know, basketball in the, in the U.S. But just, I mean, we you know, we were together 44 days. I'd say our families probably were with us those last 10 in Paris. So then you're – you know, 34 days this summer and, you know, 44 last summer, basically just all together for breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, after hours and, and just uh, 
just so much fun, so much fun. It'll literally be probably, you know, what I take out of this, uh, you know, the most was just the relationships built there. How did you delegate the scout? Like, uh, I got Serbia, I got France. I mean, how did you delegate that stuff? Yeah. When you had you, Spolstra, Lou, Kerr. Yeah, we did. We split them up just like we did the year before. And we try to, you know, get them so you didn't have uh, back-to-backs occasionally. Funny, I ended up with back-to-backs. Uh, and then almost if Australia would have beat Serbia, uh, would have ended up with three in a row, which would have been really weird. We were trying to break that up so you didn't have – uh a bunch of them in a row but we would help each other on those and then you know like um if somebody had them from the year before like uh spo had germany from last year so uh uh you know he wanted to do germany again and and i think ty had canada from last year so he did canada so we just just like that we just shared them like that but the funny thing is andy like i mean three of us have been head coaches now for quite a while i mean like my case 25 years so it had been a really 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 long while since i broke down tape (laughs) when i was doing it it was back on vcrs hooking the vcrs together so there was and i'm not great as you know on you know all this technology so there's quite a learning curve and it was funny how nervous you get trying to put together your scout edits and stuff like that um yeah again Great respect for all the work the assistants are doing uh, behind the scenes uh, and at all our programs. But it was kind of fun uh, putting all that stuff together. And then, uh, you know, not only are you dealing with the most talented players in the world, but they're so smart and they've seen everything and they pick up on things so fast. You don't need to always go into quite the detail. You do it like my level. Two last things about that. One, I'm curious, how much can you now take to your team about checking that ego at the door and and the humility that these guys had to have to come together as one when all of them, you know, are all stars in their own right and could have dominated the ball at different times. And yet they had to, you know, put that aside to win a gold medal. How do you take that and apply it to your roster? Well, I think it's easy. I mean, I think you just basically said it perfectly like the greatest players in the world on the greatest stage you can get to in basketball exemplified you know making sacrifices to their own games uh for the greater good making sacrifices in their own lives i mean gosh i mean they just got done with long 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 seasons and then to jump right into the usa basketball nobody got paid in any of this stuff it was all just to go try to win a gold medal for, you know, the United States of America. And uh, we had great, not good. We had great chemistry. I think those guys really enjoyed being around each other, really being, really enjoyed being on the same team together. And literally to your point, like we had different leading scorers almost every game, it seemed like. And then we had guys that were scoring 25, 26, 27 points a game, maybe, in their regular job that, you know, for us might get three or four shots a game and they were ball movers and, and guarding the other guy's best perimeter. I mean, I think that, you know, there's so many unsung heroes, obviously LeBron and Steph and KD were heroic, but Devin Booker was just unbelievable night in and night out. Just, uh, just checking every box, man, guarding, moving the ball, making big shots, rebounding. Uh, just doing all the little things. Anthony Davis was just the most amazing uh, defensive player and, and, you know, and, and initiating our offense, bam out of bio with just how hard he plays. And just, I mean, you just go down the line on guys that just made incredible uh, sacrifices to their own individual games that help us be successful. Hey, last thing, uh, I'm just curious, your vantage point, because you've seen a lot of great Steph shots at Davidson when you had to play them in the tournament on that three, which might be, you know, one of the greatest threes he's ever hit. Uh, what was your vantage point of that shot? Oh, I mean, at that point, Andy had made three in a row. So like, I was like, Ooh, that's a tough one. But then I'm like, ah, it's probably going in. Uh, 
Yeah, it was just so. In fact, I grabbed him after the game and just told him, like, dude, it is such a better feeling to be on your team watching that than to be on the other bench and watching that and deal with that. Because when it leaves your hands, it, you know, it's a it's a wonderful thing on our bench. And then it's like a very empty feeling when you're on the other bench, when you see him, you know, get that little bit of daylight to get his shot off. But again, the other thing I'll take to my team and share it with them is just the amazing work he puts in on his game every single day after practice is inspiring. And from a coach's standpoint, it's a beautiful thing to watch how game shots at game spots at game speed, which sounds so easy, but very rarely do most shooting workouts after practice look like that and he literally practices all those shots the the ones that he made at the you know at the highest level of stress you could possibly have, have. and then also take out Ron Ron yep. just amazing his competitive will his leadership um his approach and, and just how he approaches every thing he's always first guy at every meeting uh, he's definitely a, a, an alpha and a leader. And then just his ability, how he communicates. That sounds really simple, but it's been so hard for me probably these last, all the way going back to Nigel Williams Goss, to find somebody that will talk, you know, when he's out there on the floor. And he literally is communicating to his teammates at all times when he's on offense and defense. And that that that's the stuff that, you know, leads to winning basketball, you know, it's those little things like that. And, and uh, so it, it was remarkable to watch it from the greatest players in the world, you know, exemplify, you know, all that stuff that, you know, we like to preach. All right, before I let you go, a couple quick things on the GU behind you. Um, outside of this, you know, awful news about steel vendors getting hurt again um, while you were gone. I mean, it seems like things before then you're gone, then come back. This roster is loaded again and things are heading in the right direction as they always are, but for Gonzaga to have another great season, what are your overall thoughts on the roster makeup guys staying, which is not happening around the country and being in a position to make yeah. a great run? Yeah. Well, again, I think that's the biggest story and and that's the, uh, why uh, it was so refreshing to see the chemistry on team USA. Cause I, just so lucky and blessed to have always have that at Gonzaga here. You know, my guy, our guys, just to say they, they're such good people and of such high character and, and they just wanted to run it back another year. And, you know, when a lot of people are jumping in the portal to maybe go make a little more money or whatever, or get a little more attention, um, they chose to just run it back. And I think that that's the story of, that we have going into this year is we, you know, how good a people and the character and, and just the fondness they have for each other and, and for this program to want to run it back. We, we made some key additions, uh, you know, to help and to, to enhance us. And uh, uh, I think that's, that's, that's far and away the biggest storyline. Where do you think this team may, may have most improved? I mean, we, you know, I had a big, huge, obviously, loss with, with uh, losing Anton Watson, uh, you know, ran out of eligibility with his uh, you know, fifth year and, and moved on to the Boston Celtics. Um, but, you know, adding, uh, we got to see firsthand what, you know, Mike Ajayi was like, uh, Pepperdine. And so we obviously needed to fill that void. And then also, you know, I think we needed just a little more, perimeter pop and somebody that could create his own shot and and uh yeah adding Caliph battle is huge uh for us there he's somebody that can get in the lane and get fouled he can he had multiple multiple 30 point games in the sec <clears throat> and you know that was probably something that we didn't have this past year so you know, i think those two additions are probably the most significant and then you know the other ones are just more experience, right? More experience for Dusty Strom for coming back. More experience for Braden Huff coming back. Obviously, when you got a great point guard like 
Ryan Nemar, Nolan Hickman's now been here four years all of a sudden. Um, you know, Graham E.K. has had a fabulous year for us last year. So there's a ton of experience out there, too. And that's that's probably as important as anything. And lastly, I know you always have a great schedule, but it felt like it was critical to even like I think about UCLA going into a new league and they still made sure that they were going to play you like a game like that among yeah. many others that you've got before you get into the WCC, which also added two Pac-12 schools uh, this year. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's kind of what we do. And, and it it's probably, I think teams are discovering it might be just as important now to get out and play these high profile games as we all at least feel the uh, necessity to help our athletic departments generate revenue <laughs> through basketball. And, uh, but yeah, the, the, we've had some just incredible back and forth games with uh, UCLA over the course of, uh, you know, the last six, seven years. So uh, uh, or eight years, maybe now. And uh, so I think it, Mick recognizes it. I recognize it. it's been a great uh, series to have. So keep that going and, and uh, you know, still picking up some other ones here and there. Awesome. Congratulations, Mark.